Welcome to a lesson on series solutions of linear second order ordinary differential equations. Suppose we have a linear second order homogeneous ODE of the form p of x times y double prime plus q of x times y prime plus r of x times y equals zero. Suppose that p of x, q of x, and r of x are polynomials. We try a power series solution y equals the sum from k equals zero to infinity of a sub k times the kth power of the difference of x and x sub zero. And we solve for a sub k to obtain a solution defined in some interval around x sub zero. The point x sub zero is called an ordinary point if p of x sub zero doesn't equal zero. That is the functions q of x divided by p of x and r of x divided by p of x are defined for x near x sub zero. Notice these quotients are formed by dividing both sides of the differential equation by p of x. If p of x sub zero equals zero, then we say x sub zero is a singular point. Handling singular points is more difficult than ordinary points, and so we now focus only on ordinary points. As an example, let's solve y double prime minus y equals zero by determining a power series solution. And let's try a power series solution near x sub zero equals zero, which is an ordinary point. In fact, every point is an ordinary point as the equation has constant coefficients. So because we're centering the power series at x equals zero, we try y equals a sum from k equals zero to infinity of a sub k times x to the power of k. We now need to work on determining y double prime. Well, we first need to find y prime, and therefore we differentiate. And notice when k equals zero in the original power series, we have the constant a sub zero, whose derivative is equal to zero, and therefore y prime is equal to the sum from k equals one to infinity of k times a sub k times x to the power of k minus one. And if we expand this power series, notice the first term is k times a sub one, which is another constant, and therefore when we find y double prime, notice how the lower limit of the sum starts at k equals two. y double prime is equal to the sum from k equals two to infinity of k times k minus one times a sub k times x to the power of k minus two. Now that we have the second derivative, we want to re-index the sum so it starts at k equals zero, not k equals two. To do this, we replace k with k plus two, which I've shown here on the right in blue. If we replace every k with k plus two and simplify, we have y double prime equals the sum from k equals zero to infinity of k plus two times k plus one times a sub k plus two times x to the power of k. So now that we have y, shown here on the right in blue, and y double prime, we perform substitution into the original differential equation, zero equals y double prime minus y. So here we have the substitution. We have the power series for y double prime minus the power series for y. Because both indexes start at k equals zero, we can combine the power series into one sum, shown here in the next step. And then from here, notice both products contain a common factor of x to the power of k, in this last step, on the right we factored out x to the power of k. Now remember we know that y double prime minus y is supposed to be equal to zero, and therefore we know that the coefficients of the resulting power series must equal zero. So looking at the power series above, notice the coefficients are the quantity k plus two times the quantity k plus one times a sub k plus two minus a sub k, which again we know must equal zero. Solving this equation for a sub k plus two, on the right we have a sub k plus two equals a sub k divided by the product of k plus two and k plus one. This equation is called a recurrence relation for the coefficients of the power series. It did not matter what a sub zero and a sub one was, they are arbitrary. But once we pick a sub zero and a sub one, then all the other coefficients are determined by the recurrence relation. So again, because we know a sub zero and a sub one are arbitrary, Let's find the formulas for a sub two through a sub five. Notice for a sub two, k is equal to zero, which gives us a sub two equals a sub zero divided by two times one, or just two. To find a sub three, k is equal to one. A sub three is equal to a sub one divided by the product of three and two. For the rest of the terms, we'll rewrite them in terms of a sub zero and a sub one. To find a sub four, notice k is two, which to begin gives us a sub two divided by the product of four and three, but a sub two is equal to a sub zero divided by two, 
performing this substitution, we have a sub four equals a sub zero divided by the product of four, three, and two. And finally, for a sub five, notice k is three, which gives us a sub five equals a sub three divided by the product of five and four, but a sub three is equal to a sub one divided by the product of three and two. Performing this substitution, we have a sub five equals a sub one divided by the product of five, four, three, and two. Analyzing the terms above, notice some of the numerators are a sub zero and some of them are a sub one. Recognizing this, as well as recognizing the patterns of the factors in the denominators, notice when k is even, meaning for a sub two and a sub four, the numerator is a sub zero, and when k is odd, meaning for a sub three and a sub five, the numerators are a sub one. So for even k, we can say k is equal to two n, meaning a sub k is equal to a sub two n, which is equal to a sub zero divided by two n factorial. Notice for a sub two, n is equal to one, and the denominator would be two factorial, which is two times one, which is equal to two. For a sub four, n would be equal to two, giving us a sub zero divided by four factorial. Four factorial is equal to three times two times one, which is equal to four times three times two. And then for the odd k, we can say that k is equal to two n plus one. In this case, we have a sub k equals a sub two n plus one, which equals a sub one divided by two n plus one factorial. And let's check these denominators as well. For a sub three, we have n equals one, which gives us one factorial divided by three factorial. Three factorial is equal to three times two times one, which is equal to three times two. And for a sub five, we have n equals two. A sub five is equal to a sub one divided by five factorial. Five factorial is equivalent to five times four times three times two. From here we write down our solutions using the formulas for the coefficients for even and odd k's in terms of n. We have y equals the sum from k equals zero to infinity of a sub k times x to the power of k which in our case is equal to the sum from n equals zero to infinity of the coefficients when k is even, which are given by a sub zero divided by two n factorial times x to the power of two n, and then plus the coefficients when k is odd, which are a sub one divided by two n plus one factorial times x to the power of two n plus one. So this is our power series solution, which we can break up into two power series and for the first power series, we can factor out a sub zero, and for the second power series, we can factor out a sub one. And this is the power series solution, which you may recognize as the power series for hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine. And therefore, we can also express the solution as y equals a sub zero times hyperbolic cosine of x plus a sub one times hyperbolic sine of x. Most of the time, we won't recognize a power series as a function, and we'll leave the solution as a power series. I hope you found this helpful.